y'all want to see one of the coolest water rooms that at least I've ever made and maybe one of the coolest ones that there is, let's check it out today on Smith House. Turning the camera around and we come into the water room here at the Monarch Rooms house. The water comes in through this two inch line here that is supplied by this well over here. So that well pumps the water in. It's a pretty big well. So it requires two pressure tanks in order to function properly. The pressure tanks supply the pressure when the well's not on. So the well pumps, fills these up. There's an air bladder that pushes against the water that keeps it pressurized. And then as water is used and the well kicks on, this is our buffer there. And then we have a check valve that makes sure that none of that goes back towards the well. We come off of that for our sprinklers. We have got a backflow preventer there so that any of the chemicals, fertilizers, whatever you're using out in your yard, doesn't get in your sprinklers and come back to the drinking water. And then we split off here and we go around and we hit our filter. So we have a 20 micron and a five micron taking care of our fine particulates and our larger particulates. So it hits here first, gets cleaned up of all the large particulates and then it hits here and it takes care of the fine particulates and then it moves on. You'll see these valves sprinkled through here. We can shut off any part of this that we want. So if we're just working on these valves here, we're able to shut off the filters. I'm sorry, if we're, we wanted to shut off these filters here, we can shut off these valves here and have it rerouted through here. So each part of this system is able to be shut off via a valve and worked on. The water comes around here and hits the mother of all filters. And this is our US Water Systems Defender. This is a medium sized one. So it can produce up to 4,000 gallons per day, which for a residence is a lot. The way that reverse osmosis works is it's basically just really fine media, um, but it uses water as a exhaust, if you will. As you pull the particulates out of the water, you don't just load up the filter, you flush them with a um, what they call a waste, your waste control. And so what you're able to do with this is you're able to tell it how much water coming in it automatically splits it into something like 20% efficient. So if you're using uh, 10 gallons in, you'll only get eight gallons out, but you're able, with this system, you're able to take that two gallons of waste and run it back through again, making it much more efficient. But the more that you run it through this over and over again, the more that you recycle that wastewater, the more you're gonna load up your filters so because we have a large pond over there that we're pulling water from in case of emergencies and we're also keeping it full with um, the well when it gets low we're able to just dump into the pond without feeling like we're wasting it because we're putting it into a reserve reservoir out in the pond you can set up if people are interested i'll do a how to tune this thing it's a little bit complicated, you know, your product is your drinking water, your waste is the water that you're throwing away, and your recycled water is the stuff that you're coming back through, and you have these two valves here that you do this magic dance with to get the product, as much product as you want with monitoring how much waste you have versus how much of the waste you're sending over to the recycle. So once that's all done, once it's filtered it all out and you want to use, well, once that's all done and you filtered out all of the, the bad stuff, then it's going to shoot it over to a storage tank. So this is a 250 gallon storage tank and that storage tank holds water. That's RO water already made because this isn't big enough to keep up if we turn on all the showers on the whole property this guy can't keep up. So we have a reserve of 250 gallons here that then when you use water in the house or the barn, this variable speed pump is what provides the pressure. So if that kicks on, sucks water from over there into the variable speed pump and through a UV filter. So this is a UV filter here. So this is the final cleanup at the very end. It kills any 
bad bugs that are in there through this UV filter and then on out to the house. This water heater here is a hybrid heat pump water heater. In fact, it's only on heat pump right now. We're not even in the hybrid mode. All the heat pump means is that it's an air conditioner in reverse. So you're taking the heat out of this room and it's, you know, it's warm. This isn't an air conditioned room and we didn't want it to be because we wanted this guy to be able to pull as much heat from the room as we can. So it pulls that warm air in here. It takes the heat out of there, transfers it to the water down here. And then the cooler air that has got the heat sucked out of it is blown out there. So this acts like a little bitty air conditioner in this room when it's running. It's not running a whole lot right now because there's no guests in the guest apartment. And this is just the water heater for the guest apartment. There's another water heater over in the main house for the main living quarters. If you are going to go with a hybrid heat pump, um, one, I highly recommend them. Two, I really recommend A.O. Smith. I know that they've been getting reamed lately for quality concerns, um, and I can't speak to that. Maybe so, this is not sponsored. Maybe they're having issues, but I have exclusively put A.O. Smith in for the last several houses. The oldest that I have is over five years old at this point, and I've never had a problem with it. So. You know, take that with a grain of salt. Maybe they're having a lot of problems now. Maybe they had problems and they got them fixed. Maybe I was just lucky, but I've never had an issue with them. So, um, but there's several manufacturers of them. The second thing I'd say is if you're wanting to run it mostly in heat pump mode, which you do because the regular electric mode of just the coil is the worst way to heat water. It's the most inefficient way to heat water. So you want to run it in heat pump mode as much of the time as possible which means you want to make as much water in reserve as you can. So oversize the tank. This guy is a 60 gallon tank for a little bitty apartment that we have over there, which is a single shower. In the main house, we've got an 80 gallon tank and that helps it keep up for when all three showers are running and you have a house full of people, that 80 gallon tank is able to supply all the water that morning and then recover through the day. And then you're able to use it at the night time and then it recovers overnight. I'm making it sound like you have to really pay attention to your water usage. Um, we have this exact same unit, that actually the 60 gallon, just like this. We have that in our, in my aunt's house and we did Christmas up there last Christmas and zero problems with it. I mean, we never ran out of water. Um, I wasn't watching her electrical consumption. We were on hybrid. So if we drain the tank, it will kick on with the straight electric. Um, automatically, you don't have to change anything. So we might have used some of the electric for faster recharge, but it's an incredibly efficient way of making hot water, more efficient than propane, more efficient, obviously, than just straight electric. Um, if you're doing natural gas, the, um, the cost per BTU is going to be close. But what I love about this is this house has a 40 kilowatt solar uh, system on the roof. So this is free energy. Like this, this, this whole barn is 95% off grid, including its water because we harvest the energy of the sun. Try to do that with natural gas. So anyway, big fan of the hybrid water heaters. Um, I think that's it. Well, thanks so much for watching. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the water room. It's, the standard way of doing it for me now is I filter everything once. If I'm in the city, I filter and then I go ahead and throw a carbon filter on it too because I want all that chlorine out of there. I don't want to shower in chlorine. I don't want to drink chlorine. I don't want chlorine anywhere in my water, not even in my toilets. So I run it all the way through a carbon filter before anything else. So media filter, carbon filter. If you have the means and you don't mind the waste, whole home RO. I think it's great. I think it's, I think it's a great solution. Is it for everybody? Probably not. Do I have it in my house? No, I don't. I've got, in my house, I've got the carbon filter taking out all the city chlorine, and then I've got RO water rain to all of my drinking um, faucets and refrigerator and all of that stuff. So I don't have the whole house. I wish I did sometimes because they don't have any problems with hard water at all. It's just a I mean, it's completely pure water. There's no water softeners, there's no salt, there's no nothing, but you do have more waste water. So if you're paying a lot of money for the water or you're just water conscious, if you're using rainwater, 
probably don't want to go with the whole home RO. But for this instance, since we got the big pond and we're able to send water to and from the pond down there and we're able to filter the pond water and clean the pond water up and drink the pond water, I don't mind pushing some of the waste out there. Um, tell me what you think. Do you love it? Do you hate it? What's your preferred method? Um, none of this is sponsored, but I do like US Water Systems, so go check those guys out. Um, free plug for them. A.O. Smith have had nothing but great luck with them. Um, yeah, and that's more US Water Systems. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, comment below, tell me what you think, and uh, if you want any other videos about anything specific, let me know. Talk to you later on Smith House.